Hey, what's up? It's Coach E here from Precision Movement. And today I'm going to teach you some exercises to restore full mobility to a sprained wrist. Okay, so if you've sprained your wrist, whether you've sprained it in the most common direction in wrist extension, so you're falling out on an outstretched hand, also known as a foosh. If you get pulled this way in a sport like jujitsu, grappling, wrestling, or if you sprain it in flexion, so you could fall that way as well, or some people teach doing push-ups on your wrist like that, which is not something that I recommend for most people, 98% of people, okay? If you sprain your wrist, whether you do it in extension or flexion, the exercise that I'm gonna teach you in this video are gonna help, okay? Now, before we get into the exercise, I want to define two terms, two MAPs. So MAP is my acronym for movement and or activation pattern. Okay, so two MAPs. One is a flexed fist, and a flexed fist is making a fist and then flexing the wrist. Okay, that's one position of the wrist, one common position that you'll see in the various exercises. The other one is an extended flare. So Extended flare, wrist extension, flaring the fingers. So you're like that. Okay, so flexed fist, extended flare. Both very important because when you flex your, when you flex your wrist to get the muscles in the front here, the wrist and the finger flexors, to get them working at their shortest position requires you to be in a fist as well as the wrist flexion. Okay, if you're just here because they're multi-joint muscles, you're not fully shortening some of the muscles in there and you're not gonna restore full range of motion, full range of control. Same goes with wrist extension. If you're going into wrist extension, you're doing exercises, but your fingers are just kind of relaxed, then some of these multi-joint extensor muscles are not being fully shortened. So you're not training them at their shortest range and you're not gonna restore full mobility. Okay, so that's some of the theory behind the exercises that I'm gonna teach you here. So, the first technique is just that. All you're gonna do is work the flex fist and the extended flare maps. So make a fist, make a strong fist, maybe about 50 to 70% grip strength, and then hold that level of contraction as you flex the wrist. And don't let that fist go. And you might find that the more you flex your wrist, the more you wanna let go of that fist. That's because some of those muscles are getting to their shortened range that they're not used to working at and they want to let go, okay? So when you do this, you want to get there, get to the end range, keep working for the end range, but never let go of that contraction in the fist and hold it for five to 10 seconds, okay? You could do one side and then rest and do the other side. So the technique is make the fist first, get that level of contraction that you want to hold and then slowly flex the wrist and maintain that fist contraction, okay? So you one side, do the other side. You can do anywhere from two to five reps of that per side. Then you go into the extended flare, so same thing. Start with the flare of the fingers and then you go to wrist extension. This one is fatigued from work I was doing yesterday. Okay, because I sprained my wrist a little bit and then hold it again five to 10 seconds, okay? Two to five reps on each side. You can do this twice a week and you wanna build up over a period of two to six weeks. All right, so that's basic. Flex fist, extended flare. Now we're gonna go into the end range expansion sequences for both. So the wrist can move flexion, extension, ulnar deviation, radial deviation, okay? So flexion, extension, ulnar deviation, radial deviation. So four ranges of movement of the wrist, okay, the wrist itself. Now, what we're gonna do is end range expansion sequence in, with the flex fist and the extended flare. So we're hitting both flexors and extensors at their end ranges. So the sequence is, first we'll do the flex fist. Make your fist, same thing. Hold the strong contraction. You're gonna hold it here. And the first activation, you're gonna activate as hard as you can the flexors here, 
for one slow 360 breath. So expanding the rib cage in all directions, but maintaining the contraction strength. Okay. At the end of that slow breath, which is about 10 seconds, you're going to gradually release the muscles and then you're going to push against the knuckles with your other hand and then push into it to fire up the extensors. Okay. So gradually increase that contraction. Once you're there, hold it, your max safest contraction, hold it and breathe. Slow 360 and then gradually release, maintaining that level of wrist flexion. Okay. Now we're going to push against the pinky side and hold the fist there. So push, ramp up how hard you're pushing. Once you're at the safest, greatest contraction, hold it there, breathe. Okay. And then push against the thumb side. So we're acting the radial, activating the radial deviators. And then when you're done, gradually release everything. Okay. So what we're doing here is in this fully flexed position, fully shortened position of all these muscles in the front of the hand and the wrist, we're working flexion, extension, so entering the range, exiting the range, and then stabilizing the range with the radial and ulnar deviation or the side bending of the wrist. Okay. Now the same thing applies to the extended flare. So you're here, you get into max level of extension. Okay. Fingers are flared and you do the same thing. First contraction is pull you into the range more. Okay. One thing that you can do if you have say a finger that doesn't fully straighten. So let's say this finger is like this. You can push against the digit just to activate it, to get it to straighten. You just need a gentle touch. Okay. And that's the same for any area that you feel like you're not achieving that full range. Just kind of push there a little bit when you're going into extension and you'll fire up specific muscles in that group that are not fully activating, not working properly because they're not fully extending the joint. Okay. So other than that, the same rules apply as the flex fist. So it's extension. Let's put your hand here and flex against it. So I'm pushing against my hand, but maintaining that joint angle and then pushing against the thumb side and then pushing against the pinky side all the while maintaining that joint angle and the flare of the fingers. All right. So those are the two ERE sequences for the flex fist and the extended flare. Finally, you want to do this and start to integrate the elbow because there's multi-joint muscles across the wrist, across the elbow. So we want to make sure that we're working them all and we're working them in movements that will need them. Because if you're grabbing a fist and let's say you're doing a golf swing, your elbow is involved. You want to be able to be strong with your grip. You want to be able to move the wrists while the elbows are moving. So this is getting into my functional integration techniques that take very base level activation techniques through end range expansion or improving mobility techniques now to functional integration and working it into patterns that we use in sport and life. Okay. So what we're going to do is the elbow car, which stands for controlled articular rotation with the flex fist position and the extended flare position. So first we'll make flex fist. So we go here, we extend the elbow and then we flex the elbow, keeping that flex fist the whole time. And then we, pronate and do the same thing. Extend fully, full extension of the elbow, get the tricep firing and then flex fully, get the bicep firing without losing any of the contraction in the fist and the wrist. Okay. Then you supinate fully and do the same thing. You'll want to do anywhere from three to six repetitions of the flex fist. Do one side, do the other side, and then extended flare. Same thing. Start an elbow flexion, extend the elbow, keep the extended flare, flex the elbow hard, and then supinate. Extend the elbow, keep that extended flare, get full range, and then flex the elbow, keep the extended flare. Okay. So this is getting into functional integration. Now, 
These techniques, I'm guessing you've never seen them before, they're very unique, and the methodology taking you from base level through to functional integration or performance level is something that I program into all of my courses. And if you've got any elbow, wrist, hand issues, or even shoulder issues that might be stemming from the elbows or the wrists, then I highly suggest you check out the upper limb control course, which is gonna teach you these techniques and a lot more. And most, most importantly, it's gonna take you through three progressive phases to build that build on each other. So you're not just getting a bunch of exercise, but you're getting a specific step-by-step -step program taking you from base level, restoring all activation and function of the muscles, addressing structural limitations, and then working up towards functional integration. Okay, so if this is of interest to you, then click the link in the description or at the end of this video to learn more about upper limb control. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other videos like this to get your body moving freely and without pain. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.